Hello, I'm Christy, the fiction expert, and this week's element of fiction is setting. So, setting is the time and place where a story occurs. It can include many things, including social statuses, weather, the historical period, details about immediate surroundings, and it also varies completely from book to book. Even fiction books will be completely different from each other. They can have real-life settings or fictional settings, even a combination of real and fiction. More things that can relate to determining what the setting is is observing the freedoms or limitations that are specific to the story, the political climate, the large events that take place during the time period. Another component that may relate is the social classes of the characters, the expectations of social groups that would be there at the time, environment, environmental factors, the barriers which have, and the barriers which have an effect on characters. So the setting adds to the setup of the character's development and it is an opportunity for the reader to dive deeper into the book and understand why the characters and other elements of the in the book are the way that they are. So, in Time and Again, my fictional book. It's by Jack Finney. And the main character is invited to join a secret business opportunity. And at the beginning of the book, when the idea is described to him, the author uses setting to draw in the reader. The descriptions of the setting during these chapters also adds to the characterization um, of some of the characters and sets up the mood and theme of the novel. So, as Simon, our main character, um, so he's walking into the place where he first finds out what his job is going to be all about. The author gives a very eerie description of what the surrounding place looks like. So, for example, in the book, um, page 23, um, the narrator writes, The walks were littered with wet paper, crushed orange drink cartons, broken glass, and there were no other pedestrians. Across the street, silent and deserted in the rain, hundreds of rusting car bodies, compacted into cubes, were stacked behind a steel mesh fence. So this sets up a curious setting and makes the reader question what Simon's task and new job will be. By Finney, using his words to describe a sad and dirty, desolate location, he used the element of setting um, very well by having descriptive words about the weather and immediate surroundings. There are a few many examples where Simon uses his senses to, to verbalize the setting he sees around him, but this not only gives the reader a better understanding of what he is experiencing, but it also improves his character development. He sees, and quoted chapter or page 27 by um, Jack Finney, a green filing cabinet stood on the wall opposite me, a mirror hung on the wall behind me, on the wall to my right beside the door was a small framed picture. A watercolor of a covered bridge. Not bad work, but pretty standard. Th that was all there was to see. This can be seen as the real-life setting that explains the immediate surroundings, although these seem like small details that do not normally explain the setting completely compared to other books. But Time and Again is about a person who must observe his surroundings um, and learn from them in order to do the job he's asked. The further into the book the reader goes, the more the small details around him become more important, especially the time periods that Simon ends up going into to experience. So when looking at time and again, it is evident that setting is important to the storyline and the characters because of the description and the meaning behind what the weather or the placement of the items in a room may mean. The narrator acknowledging the small details about his surroundings can imply that he or she um, is that they're aware of and they're mindful of their situation and the life they are they have in the book. So the bad weather can also imply the mystery that Simon is going to enter, and it also adds dramatization for the reader to become more intrigued in the events that will soon unfold. Um, setting might be the strongest underlier element of fiction because it describes more than just one element of fiction. It relates to 
characterization um, when you look at the setting further. So, in Jack Finney, you have lots of examples where Simon enters a room, and as you heard earlier, how he's talking about the green filing cabinet and the picture on the wall, that's crucial. It's crucial to understand that part of the setting because moments later, one minute, one second passes and the room looks completely different. The filing cabinet's a different color. The watercolor changes to like a bridge. And Simon is very aware of this. And when the people come back in to see how he did, he tells them what had happened. And he's curious about it, but he never gets scared or concerned about anything. He just, he's very calm about it, which is that, you know, describes the, it describes the work that he's going to be doing. It describes what the people are testing him for. It describes what type of personality Simon has. He's very calm and collected. Um, so that's pretty important to this book, especially. Setting is probably the biggest factor to be looking at in time again, because we're going to be going through all these different time periods that the people who he joined with created almost, almost like a time machine. But I'm sure reading further into it, I'll get even more small little descriptive parts about the, um, the setting which also um, improves character development. For um, another character in the book, um, he is the one who recruits Simon to this organization that they have. And he, in the book, they describe him as, just a little paraphrase here, they describe him as... He's, he's short... And he's very, well, yes, he's just short. They just say he's short. Um, but he's very open with Simon, and he's kind of, he kind of, um, he tricks Simon a little bit. He jokes around with Simon. He's a very also laid-back dude. I would not say Simon's a laid-back dude, because he kind of, he wants to know what's going on with the project, but while Simon's learning the readers are also learning what is going to happen. So the setting kind of set that up, and it's a very important part of literature. So, thank you. Next week, we will be talking about figurative language. Stay tuned. Christy out.